Great Belize Cooking is brought to you by the Beverage Division at Carl H. Menzies Company Limited and by Citrus Products of Belize Limited. Welcome to Great Belize Cooking. I'm your host, Chef Sean Quillin. I am today in the Cayo District. And you know where they say, the West is the best. So they say, I don't know, we're gonna find out. I am here standing on this suspension bridge, the Hawksworth Bridge, overlooking the magnificent Macal River. Look at the beauty of this place. It's a nature lover's paradise. But in addition to that, guess what it has? The wonderful people. And with people comes culture and cuisine. So I am on a personal mission to find out what's the difference between tamales and boyos. Everybody eat it, you know, but we're gonna find out the secret and why. Also, my grandmother used to make maja blanca and sadly she passed away and she didn't leave the recipe. So we're heading to Benke and I'm gonna find out the secret to make maja blanca and it comes with superstitions. So I am excited, let's go. We are here in the village of San Antonio in the Cayo district. I am on a mission to finally, once and for all, define the difference between boyos and tamales. Who better to us than a mother and daughter from the San Antonio women's group? Vamonos. Hello. Hello, Sean. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, you. Here thank, San Antonio. Thank you. You're Let's welcome. Go. I'm going to meet Mrs. Sefa. Oh, she is the first You're welcome here Patate. to our kitchen. Thank you. And I hear this is your mom. Yes, yeah, she's my mom. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. We work together making the traditional food. Before we turn it into a masa, we need to prepare the corn. Yes. The corn, the way of preparing the corn is yes. by cooking the corn with the white line, making our nistamal. 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 In Maya, this would we, we would call it kum. The people of San Antonio, they're from the, the Yucatecan. Mm -hmm. So we spoke about the casuar and how they came to um, Corozal and Orindra via that border from Mexico. Okay. Today we are in San Antonio. We are very much close to the Guatemalan, Guatemalan border. border. So are you saying that they came from Guatemala too? We believe that, yes, our people living in this area here, they, they couldn't come through the northern border. So they got to Guatemala from Guatemala. They came in wow. to Belize. This, that's, that's what we um, believe how it happened. That's fascinating, fascinating. Mm -hmm. No, this is what we know as Massa. It's getting into the masa. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sean, you want to try? I want to try, ma'am. Are you trying mash? Maybe I'll go get a matata if I don't mash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to the comal now. Okay, now we are going to make tortillas. Uh -huh. I can do that. I support the dough with this hand. Yes, ma'am. And I turn it with the other hand. Ay, ay, ay. This no have nothing, this no have no baking powder, no oil, no, no, no only not, water. Only water. Yes. I'm amazed because you don't have no leavening agent that I just salt and corn. Yes. Okay. So it puff up. Mm -hmm. After we have the masa, from there we can decide what kind of food we want to make. Yes. What's that there? This is atole. Atole. What we did here, this is very common for people here in this village. Uh -huh. This is what um, we would make out of the same corn dough. Uh -huh. We dissolve it in water. Before that, we had boiling water with cinnamon sticks. Canela. Canela, yes. And um, added this dissolved dough to the boiling water and the cinnamon. If you want to What's add this? panela, panela. This is panela. Oh, I know panela. Uh -huh. yes. Panela is the from the sugar, not true? Yes, it's what is made out of the sugar cane. Just this panela. Panela, uh huh. You sweeten it, and then oh from there goodness. you can. Um, Thank you again. Yeah. So corn is a versatile it's thing. Tamales, masa, uh, yeah. garnaches, tortillas, salbutes, salbutes, empanadas, tacos, and all oh these man. kind of stuff made out of um, corn. Hmm. But the, um, it's a little. It's naturally get stick too, mm -hmm. true? Yes. We cannot make boyas or tamales without the banana leaf. Or okay. Leaf, so. This one right yeah. here, true? Yes. Okay. You go. This one? Yes, cut that one. Right, so. Why? One is enough? Good? 
Very big border. When we have the leaf, we have to sterilize this leaf, you see. Ooh. At the same time, it's very hard and stiff. Okay. We're not able to wrap any kind of thing with it. It easily breaks. So what we normally do is that we have to roast the leaf on, on the, the fire. fire. Um, you roast it on the other this side. This side for half to. Uh -huh. I learned again, I hear they do it back the whole time. Here. You don't leave it there. You're Just to get the smokiness. Mm -hmm. And it makes it pliable. It, yes, it's drying, it's sterilizing. We don't need to wash it because it rained last night. <laughs> <laughs> we need to clean it. That's all we need to do. Make sure when you're roasting your leaf, you need to roast it very well. If not, you're going to have a green boyos or tamales. It needs to be very well roasted. You again, green boyos? <laughs> yes. yes. It, the color of the leaf would stay on the, on the corn. Oh, uh -huh. I see. I see. I see. I see. That's good, mommy? Yeah, yes, that is. If I did do food, you tell me. No, no, I can feel like I did do thing and I know they do thing. Okay. After you roast it, you tear it up from the... Tear it. Little stem here. No foil. No foil. We not deal with foil. After we have have it here, uh -huh. then what we will do is that we will take a piece of cloth and we will be cleaning clean it, it once again. We clean it very well. We this is the... the process of making the boyos. 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 Yes. Straight up masa, not colado, not, not strained. Colado. Yes. So what we have here is only the dissolved dough. In, in water. water. A little bit of salt. The salt is for you. Flavor. Your flavor, depending on your, so on your taste. So water. And salt. We're going to add some a vegetable oil. Uh-huh. I hear chicharron fat nice too in there, right? Yes. This is before we had oil and vegetable oils. Yes. People would What's slaughter that? their... Nice seven. Slaughter their pigs and they get would the get the oil from it and this is what they would be using for making the boyos or tamales. We're looking for a dough but cooked it's going to be a cooked, cooked dough. dough. So when you are eating a boyos or a tamales, it's well cooked. Yes. Cook, the carne is cooked for number one when uh -huh. we do the nistamal. Oh, Second, yes. when we are going to cook the dough. Again. And third, third time when we steam. steam the tamales. So he cooked and he cooked and he cooked again. He cooked. Okay. Ay, the smell, the smell, and the smoke. If you cook this in your a stove in your house, it not taste like this, no sure? No. Only this way. I do all my tamales on this fire. Yes. Now it's thickening. You have to get to see how it look now. The sides come together. Together. And it's starting to get thick. And this is almost done now. Almost done. Almost, almost, done. almost getting there. This looks good. Okay. True? Mm -hmm. It's ready, you can see. All yes. the dough is one ball. So, so what, what's this? What's this? This is the col. Col. It's more like a sauce that we use for filling the dough there. The dough, the tamales and the, the dough. Uh, yes. Okay. In here, we um, cut the chicken into pieces. Chicken. Uh -huh. To the chicken, we added sweet peppers, onions, garlic, black pepper, yes. salt. We stew our chicken. Uh -huh. Oregano leaves and most Oregano. important uh -huh. thing is that the culantro, the wild cilantro. Culantro, it can't be cilantro, it'll it be, can the be the wild one. The wild one. The red color is what we get from the achote. achote. If you would know, Famous. normally, traditionally, people keep their achotes. This is what they would use as food coloring. Yes. This is the fruit. They would gather all the seeds. They're going to fix it. They're going to process the seeds, mm -hmm. cook it and from there you they make, make their little paste. Recado. Okay, so what do we need So now? for the boyos, you want to make it a little more, add garnish to the, to the dough, then oh, we add I some black beans. Frijoles negros. Yes. Frijoles negros. Yeah. So you put black bean to the masa. To the masa. Here is where you add the black for bean. For boyos. For boyos. Look at this. That's beautiful. This is a corn and black bean, and this, again, is a meal by itself. So question, the leaf have to do it this way or that way? Does it matter? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doing it correctly, you have to find out the way, um, the, this is the side, the smooth Aha. side of the... That's the same side that I smoked first. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Now, fill it with the meat now. Ay, ay, ay. I hope that water, the boil already, because I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I saw chicken breast there. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. Okay. I love it, I love it. How do you fold? 
pull it. Uh -huh. Put the Swiss first, then mm -hmm. the other way. Mm -hmm. Wow. Feel it where the dough is. Mm -hmm. Pull it there. Beautiful. And aboyos is long. Uh -huh. That's another quality of aboyos. You have to be long. Long. This is the same pattern we had the linings down there. Mm -hmm. So we put it there. Give a little elevation. Aboyos. So we repeat that process 500 times. 500 times. Okay. <laughs> Great. Perfecto. Okay. So you're making your own? Huh. Okay. Let me try. That's enough. Yes. I see mommy get to um, lift the top and then you mash them. I like the part that you say you don't have to be circular because then that <laughs> call is different than call. It's call and call, two different things, ladies and gentlemen. Call the white line, call the sauce made from, from Ricardo part. Massa. Yes. Hey, just <laughs> so suffers. Yes. I did tremble. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Doing this way? Okay. You fold it all around. All around. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it? Yes. Pull it back? Fold it all around. Oh, okay. not bad. And sometimes some people put foil, but this is a real thing in San Antonio no Village. Foil. We don't use foil. We're in a village. We have leaf can done. A lot. Can done. <laughs> so we go all that around. way. And then I see my next thing, so I go so. Yes. Mm -hmm. You that feel, our technique I just yes. learned and you feel that makes a lot of sense. The end of the door. Yes. And from there you fold. Because now it's starting to compress it. I must say, my one looks just like yours, Miss Josefa. <laughs> Boy! I've already learned. I did learn. I did get closer to your village, my little. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I see yes. you have a falda, okay? Yes. No falda. No that's, falda? That's to make the tamales. Tamales. To train the masa. Okay, so. We usually use a piece of cloth where the, the pieces of the masa won't pass. So it's like a cheese cloth? Yes, like a, like cheese, a cheese cloth. Like a cheese cloth? Yes. So remember, the difference between masa and boyos and tamales, tamales we're going to strain. Mm -hmm. Tamales so you need to strain. You so will help me you were hold this? For? Are you going to hold it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I have the dough already okay. dissolved with, with water. water. Only water. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Let's Are they hold on, mommy? I grab it. Now what I will do, I will push my hand in there so that it can pass. If I don't put my hand, it won't pass. I could be whole day here, <laughs> never finish. <laughs> Lift it up this way. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you hold it there. Okay, okay. Do okay. like one hammock. Aha. Uh -huh. Where I can walk. So for your siesta. <laughs> you take your siesta back here too? Yes. And again, everybody have their preference. Which one do you prefer? <coughs> Me? The tamales. Tamales. I prefer boyas. You see that? <laughs> that's what I prefer strain too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I like the, the texture of the... Mm -hmm. It's like gelatin, Ge gelatinous, yeah. soft. Mm -hmm. And my girlfriend, she don't like that. She like the tortillado. So everybody have a preference. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what we'll throw, we call it shish. The shish. <laughs> Only the shish. Just the shish. Just the shish. <laughs> it's mean so the corn that in didn't Maya, we call it umati. Uh huh. I can't repeat it. One more time. <laughs> Umati. Umati. <laughs> this is a beautiful technique. This is just like when you're making cheese, and then you have to get as per. Super beautiful. Now okay. you can see the shish. The shish. Mm -hmm. This is called the shish. Okay. So you're not able to use this again okay. because all the starch of the corn. The have it. starch. That's beautiful to see. All the starch mm -hmm. come here. So this is just spent right. starch. No good. Yes. For the cerdo. cerdo. Okay, Mr. Shan, we are okay. going to cook the tamales dough now. All right. We will fry it. Okay. First, what we will do, we will put some salt to the dough. Uh huh. This. Yes. Mix Look at it that. Well. Look at that now, it's just. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. No. Now turn again. This is the tamales. Now Gorgeous. we have tamales. Tamales. You can feel it how it feels. Yes. It's very watery. Yes. But in the meanwhile, it turns thick. 
You need to add oil to it. So this is like so a big it won't stick to the Don't pot. It's going to start like, uh -huh. like lava. Bubbling. Yes. But you know something? This thing went from like just liquid to yes, quick thing. Yes, that's mm -hmm. why. Fast. Wow. Boy. Feel it now. This is, man, not be too close. Don't close. And at this end fire, I can't lower it, so I don't know. Oui. <laughs> Got it. Look at this, look at this. Wow. Wow. We have the tamales now. So this, because it's hot, it's like a little watery. But mm -hmm. as it gets cold, it starts getting, getting more back. Uh -huh, like into a dough. Tamales. So this, tamales, what we use, yes. we will add some vegetables to it. I have already done this. What is in here? Tomatoes, mm -hmm. onion, uh -huh. cilantro, mm -hmm. and peas. Uh, I see green salt. peas. Green peas. So yes. it's, it's come on pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. You don't have lime? No. No, no, no lime. lime. Now, okay. we will start. Ay, ay, ay. Now we have the call already. Mm -hmm. The same? Same call. Wow. So I had to eat that right, so? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So that's beautiful just like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will wrap it. Meanwhile, she would continue. Okay, for me, wrapping the tamales, uh -huh. this is a little more soft, so I, we try to use a bigger leaf in the beginning. Mm -hmm. This one is not like tortilla. You can't fold it, manipulate can't it. Fold. It's liquid. No, it's liquid. You have to be careful with it. And that's a nice fat one. Yeah, so you make it that's why you know a little more square. <laughs> we try to fold it very well so it won't leak from the um, leaf, leaf when you set it in the pot. There you go. you want to try? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> so, no, 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 so again, so and so. <laughs> so. This is a little complicated one. It's complicated. So you go so. Fold uh -huh. it from here as yes. if you were wrapping a gift. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, there, there. Stop, Stop there. Then okay, I see ya. Press it. Press here. Uh -huh. Pull here. from that end. Up. You feel where your dough is. I feel something right here. Okay. okay, go up. And then over. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And that's your <laughs> tamal. Well, we cook our pollos and tamales in the same pot. Same pot. I don't in have to get two different. No, no. Both different temperatures, okay. nothing because of it. We have all the boils over in there. Uh -huh. what separate we'll separate yeah. this leaf. Hi, and you know the leaf, the smell of the leaf when we burn it? Don't have yes. a nice scent. Mm -hmm. Pour some water. Mm. To steam. Yes. And then we'll cover. cover it. Cook it. How many hours? Go to the fire. Uh huh. 30 minutes. 30 minutes, quick. It's gonna be two plates. Oi, yay, yay. Watch that. That's the tamales. You I see the tell. difference with the tamales? I could tell. Mm -hmm. That's what we said, it had the gelatinous consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is a little bit of sweet potatoes, and you have some. Let me put um, one of the boils. One of so the boils in the same have, plate. Uh -huh. Contrast, lovely. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. Look there. at this. The habanero sauce, that's a choice if you want to yes. eat. And I'll tell you something, mm -hmm. that is a plate of food. That's okay. Can you remember San Antonio? Yes, um, our villagers are very well known as farmers. Yes. Our lingui language is strongly spoken in this village here, yes. the Mayan Yucatec language. Yes. Um, people depend a lot on farming and things that we have around. You see the plates that we prepare today are all Gorgeous. fresh things Gorgeous. that we found from around us, main products that would be planted here, corn, beans, peanuts, Peanut. is a is the big deal in San Antonio. Wow, I'll tell you, I have to come back and visit you because you have too much culinary goodness that I, I we only touch the surface, we talk just about paper, it's about, we have we peanuts now, that's another thing you just explained to me. Yes, so we have already prepared the plates. Mm. Mr. Sefa is coming with the freshly Mr. squeezed Sefa. orange juice. Yes. I want to say thank you so much. Thank you You're so much, Mr. Sefa. You're welcome. Thank you. The women's group is about nine of you. You do this almost every day, keeping the tradition. You had a mission statement you told me earlier. Yes, our slogan is empowering women, inspiring our children. Couldn't have said it any better we myself. And there you have it. We've busted that myth about tamales and boyos. 
And guess what? We're in San Antonio. I'm going even farther west. We're going to Benke next, and we're going to find out the secret about the Maja Blanca. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We're now in Benque Viejo del Carmen, still in the Cayo district. I've been having a, such a great time. The amount of culture in this place, the Maya, the Mestizo, it's just a melting pot of goodness. So I'm here in the Centennial Park, again in Benque Viejo, and I'm here with Miss Maria Hernandez, better known as Miss Belita. She's a teacher at the Mopan Technical College, and she will teach me how to make Maja Blanca. Hi. Hi. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. So what is Maja Blanca? Well, Maja Blanca is a, is a rice custard yes. that is made out of rice. Mm -hmm. And um, this is mainly used, um, we do it at home. Uh -huh. And um, we usually do it on, on whenever we have um, some events, community events, yes. such as the posadas. What is posadas? Okay, posadas is, it's, it's nine days before the, um, the Christmas Eve. And then just where they have the lodging of the Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. Okay. So we have nine different days. And each day is being hosted by a special, uh, by a family. Okay. okay. And during my posada, when I do my posada, mm -hmm. is where I prepare the maja blanca. With the rice, you can do the maja blanca and you can also do the horchata. Horchata, which is another drink made from uh -huh, rice. From rice. This is also, my grandmother, Miss Manuela Young, in Corozal, used to do this too. Because mm -hmm. she used to do it when esquipulas and when she had Yes. Like, uh, we do it for the rezos. Yes. As well. So th it's connected to like, religion and Catholicism? Well, well, we were brought like that, mm -hmm. all right? I'm a Catholic and, and, and we know that whenever we have these novenas and stuff, every day we need to give something. Oh, so, yes. yes. And when you offer, what do you call it when you offer to the dead? Oh, that is, um, the, the, that is for the, um, in November. Uh -huh. uh, oh, for finados, yes, that's finados. we call it finados. No, for finados, if your loved one used to like Maja Blanca, then you prepare Maja Blanca. Beautiful. So, you start with rice. Okay, yes. We start with rice. Regular rice, any rice. Regular rice. White you buy rice. Uh -huh, a pound of rice and you soak it overnight. Overnight. Okay, the reason for soaking is so that the rice gets tender. See, it's okay. very soft. So it's soft. It's soft. All right, good. Okay. Then once the, the rice has been soaked, of course that has to be overnight. If, for example, you forgot to soak your rice, uh -huh. you can also soak it with, with hot water. Hot water will yes. help yes. speed up the process. Yes. Okay, and then after that, we grind it with a corn grinder. Okay. Earlier, we went to a village called San Jose Palmar in the Orange Rock District, and mm -hmm. we learned about masa, and we learned about recado and anato, and we realized that the Yucatec Maya had influence with the casuar. Uh -huh. You know what I went just now? We went to uh, San Antonio, and we were in the Cayo District, and these people have the same tradition, and they were Yucatec Maya too. <laughs> amazing. It's amazing. So what do I do here? Okay, okay, we get the rice, and we put a little, a little, because I, I um, know that rice gets, quite okay. difficult to grind it. Okay. Okay, I'll put a little. And, and if you don't have a food meal at home? Uh, you could use a blender. <laughs> That's yes. a modern one. <laughs> modern. But the blender yes. not give like? No, not as smooth. One. No, it won't give a, a consistency as smooth as that. All right, so. Love it. Uh -huh. I love it. Mm -hmm. We it's are at the true. Centennial Park. Mm -hmm. Why is this very significant to Benque Viejo del Carmen? Oh, to us it's very important because um, this is our landmark here in Benque Viejo. Here's uh -huh. where our ancestors are buried. I heard this was a cemetery. Yes, this was a cemetery and this is so sacred for us. Wow. Uh, so they and, uh, this. as you can see, we still have some tombs of our... Um, wow, the tombs yes, are still yes. here. I hear they have superstition with this thing. Oh, yes. Sure. And I, I have, yes, I have one. Well, I was told by my, I, I learned by my, um, with my mother. My mother taught me how to do the Maja Blanca. Uh -huh. and many people do it different. I, I, I have proven that, that uh -huh. whenever you're doing Maja Blanca uh -huh. and you are dissolving the Maja Blanca and you are cooking it, uh -huh. um, pregnant people should not be around. Aye. And I remember that Christmas, Christmas, and that day for my posadas, I was cooking my Maja Blanca and my daughter was pregnant mm -hmm. and she just went by and just half peeped the pot. Mm -hmm. And I said, don't come here because you'll spoil my Maja Blanca. Uh -huh. And she started to laugh and she walked mm -hmm. to her room. 
and you know I kept stirring and stirring and stirring and that that pot that Mahablan can never get hard. <laughs> All right, I'm so. Not pregnant, so. <laughs> All right, so okay. this is it here. Yes, so since the, the, um, the rice has been grinded, it's very smooth, see? Mm. Uh -huh. like, it looks like masa. Like, like masa? Yes. Uh -huh. So what do we hear next from here? Okay, what we do after that is once it's, it has been um, grinded, then we dissolve yeah, it in, 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 in water. Here we go, add it. Beautiful. Uh -huh. So the blender will do it, but not so beautiful. No, not as smooth as this. Not as smooth as this. So we Nothing beats traditional, not you? Yes. <laughs> It takes a little while to be So gone. you said earlier there are different applications for the rice. Would yes. this now become horchata? Yes, this could become horchata. Right now, if I would if I would um, dissolve it, uh -huh. and then I decide I'll just strain it, and then add milk to it, and, and cinnamon powder, and, like and then you drink it. Just so, add then, ice. so horchata is made from rice that's yes, not cooked? Yes, it's not cooked. Wow, uh -huh. or I didn't They know call that. the rice custard or the maja blanca is cooked, and the horchata um, is not. All right, so once it's been dissolved, then we are going to strain it. Strain it. How uh -huh. do we strain it? Okay, we have a cheese cloth. Uh -huh, Almost of cheese like cloud. a cheese cloth. Yes. Beautiful. Um, it, it has a rough weave, a plain rough weave, so that it's a see-through fabric. Okay. Okay. At least three fourth or one yard. Okay. Um, so are you sure to man? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is it, it's an old pot, but this is my favorite. And I told my daughter, if I'm coming, I'm going to take my favorite pot. You have to bring a favorite pot. Yes. Yes. It is my favorite pot. Uh -huh. Everything there. there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> this pot. <Yes>. Hey. <laughs> This like is the, the one, yes. The um, when I am alone, and I sometimes my, my kids are not around, but when I am alone, I tie it. Because I... this pot work, the other pot no handle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, pour it down. If it's too thick, we need to add more water. Water. Ah. Put some in there? Yes. I only benke water if we use like that, nice like benke. <laughs> That's true. Beautiful, mom. Okay, and then you strain it. Okay. So look at that. So at this point now, what do we do here? Okay, after this, and when we're ready, we have strained it already, then we're going to cook it. So you cook it? Yes. So we're going to a fire hut? Yes, we have, we're going to a, to a friend there, uh -huh. and she has lend us our kitchen and to do the fire. Yes, she has a fogon. And, and the I'm... fogon make it nicer? Well, yes, yes. Whenever you cook beans, of course. Okay. So this is the place that you said we can go cook? Of course. All right. Boy, this is our serious fogon, yeah? Hello. How are you? I'm Sean. You're Miss Anna. I thank you for lending us all your beautiful fogon. Okay. Look at this nice fire. Okay. So what are we going to do? Just put okay. it on the fire? No, before we put it on the fire, we have yes. to make sure that we store it properly because it settles at the bottom. Oh, yes. Yes. Sometimes it settles at the bottom and then it's going to... Okay, so make sure that we store it now. This is one thing. Once we start to cook the Maja Blanca, we cannot stop storing it. You cannot stop no. storing it? No. Or two people cannot be doing it. I cannot help. Thing. No. Whenever, that's what my grandmother used to tell me. Whenever you are cooking Maja Blanca, yes. you have to do it and keep doing it and storing it and storing it and storing it. Somebody comes and help you, it will not, um, it will not work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I will just look. Okay. Uh -huh. While you cook your, your, your Maja Blanca, while you are storing your Maja Blanca, you could be roasting oh. the, the cinnamon. Canela. The, the canela. Um, you, you, you can place it on the, on the, on the comal. That's such a wonderful idea. Yes. Guess what I found? Uh -huh. I found a crit. Come. Okay, that's uh -huh. better. <laughs> that's better. You're now. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Miss Anna is a, a little bit more talented. I will take this off because okay. it's a bone too. Of course. Look at that. Just boom. This uh -huh. fascinating, you know. See and see how smooth it is. Look at that now. Uh -huh. Okay, so we can set can it aside. Up? Yes, I'm uh -huh. going to help you okay. with that. And then we add. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> okay. Hey, I can't start. I can't touch it. No, no, you could now. You could. You, you can now. I would for two pounds of, of, of rice. I would use three tins of milk. Or you sweeten it the way you want. For every two pounds of rice, three tins of milk. Uh -huh. I love that you have a recipe because a lot of times we cook with all recipes. Okay. Now, how you know when the maja blanca is is ready? Uh -huh. is that... That's okay. a secret. Yes, that's a secret. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this is ready now. So did it work? So yes. I, so it's bubbling now. I have good now. spirit. 
<laughs> the spoon stand up in there. Yes. So you have a piece of board? Yes, a cutting board. And this is a um, mouth island. From the metate? This yes, is yes, for yes, grinding yes. corn, no? But I only have this, we call it the brasso. Brasso? Uh -huh. So we. Uh -huh. Brasso? Uh -huh. So there's a flanera. What will happen if you put it in the fridge? Get tired? Um, yeah, a little. Not, not too. Unless you don't put it in the freezer. And then we add the canela. So there you have Maja Blanca. Simple with just canela, milk, and amor. Thank you, Miss Velita. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank it you for a pleasure. Exp I explored your culture. I got a culinary journey. I had a historical journey. We learned about the Centennial Park, the, 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 the cemetery. And we got to cook in Miss Anna's um, amazing fogon. Mm -hmm. We had and had me <laughs> the smoke and I leave water, the commode and I still it. So the, can we taste the Maha Blanca? Of no? course we can. Again, I have uh -huh. to thank you because, I, you know. Most I, people say that when, it, when the Maha Blanca is warm, it tastes better. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. I'll tell you connotations just now. I remember Manuela Young, my grandmother, seriously. I went back and that's what food does to you. And it's just such an amazing thing that you shared a piece of your history with me. Of course, of course. And this your tradition. Is... And Benke. So I went to San Antonio now in Benke and we we learned about how to make atole. I made atole earlier, you know. Okay, atole out of what? Corn. Oh, okay. Maja Blanca, atole, masa. I made corn masa. And we made tamales and boils. Now, I am going to put my twist on these finished products because they are not technically ingredients this time. So I don't know what's coming, but stay tuned. Ingredients for today's Great Belize cooking show were proudly provided by Brody's, exclusive agent for quality food products. Welcome back. As usual, I'm having such a wonderful time discovering cuisine of Belize. This is the part now that I will put my take off on the cuisine, which I call inspired Belizean cuisine. Look at, I found out the difference between tamales and boyos. I always wanted to know that, so you see? Even me, the land. Watch ya. Pibil, everybody eats pibil. It's a Yucatec thing. And look how we found Yucatec Maya in San Antonio, in the Cayo district. Here I have a pig head. And you can't tell me that's not authentic pig head pibil. And I'm going to pair that with what, you know, if you, you go in a cookbook, you see what is polenta. Polenta is an Italian thing and it's a corn grounding, uh, like a cornmeal paste. When Miss Josefa and Timotea were making the polenta, the colado, that immediately reminded me of polenta. So we're going to make a black bean and corn polenta colado with some sauteed chaya and we're going to serve it with the pibil. Pibil technically in Maya means to bury. So you would build, dig a hole, wrap it in banana leaves, uh, recado, number one ingredient, anato, and you would put it on the ground cooking for a lot of hours. Here we are at the banks of the Macal River. You see the beautiful Hawksworth Bridge in the background. They actually have some grills here that people can come hang out and barbecue. So I'm gonna take the pig head and we're gonna put it in a pot. We have a pot here, right? Look at that. <laughs> I'm very excited this time, you know. So here I have some recado. If you, also, if you get some recipes, all the recipes are different. You have a lot of spices. People put what, what is called naranja agria, and that is uh, sour orange. If you don't have sour orange at home, you know, you deserve the recado. You could always make it, you know. You take orange juice and you add acid to it. You add lime juice or vinegar. Here we have orange juice, Caribbean pride. I will add some orange juice to the recado. And to that, we're gonna add some vinegar. Like I said, you put lime juice or vinegar. So you make your own naranja agria. Uy. Vinegar. 
This acid will help with the help with the uh, breakdown of the hairs and the tendon, the, the ligaments of the pig, no? Yes, darling, we're getting to you right now. So we're gonna put some onion. You could blend it, you could just put it like that. A banero. I went to the wonderful market here in San Ignacio, one of the best in the country. Found some escabeche peppers. And black pepper salt, of course. enough salt garlic if you notice ladies and gentlemen I like you the mixture chicken you know but just with more bold spices the, the, the theme of mestizo Mayan cuisine always habanero always anato same thing when you made the boyos the call remember the call that we made earlier just same kind of elements man clove we could put some oregano and again we find we find this in the supermarket yeah bro this but you could if you're at, in your village you will have oregano, but this is the quick home version. We could blend this in a blender. It will become a marinade almost, and it would be just beautiful. Here, we will just mix up everything. Look at all the colors, fresh, bright colors. So if you don't have a pig head, don't worry, man. A pig shoulder, a leg, as any piece of the pork. And oh, by the way, if you don't have a fogon, you don't have a pot big like this one. Guess what? Put it in your crock pot. Set it overnight. Set it, forget it, come back in the morning, go to work, come back later in the afternoon. You have pay bill, man. It's not that difficult. For authenticity, we put some, we wrap it up with banana leaf. This is like the cover. So again, I'll, I'll see you a little later. And we just cover it with leaves. The leaf will steam, it will give the flavor and we don't have to put it, you don't have to dig up your yard and put it in your yard and under the ground. <laughs> they pick the come up the hill. Why, brother Kenton? Yes, sir. Where do I put this? Right there, sir? Yes, man. <laughs> pay bill, bro. We're not used to this, but it may shoot, but we'll see what happens. So the pig head is doing its thing in the fire. That's going to take like three and a half hours. Now we're gonna make the next step, remember the masa? They had two ways, they had tortillado, they had colado. I like the colado, that's my favorite actually. We have some masa and in the estillo de tamales, we are going to mix it with some water and we're gonna have to cook that and strain it. I didn't have a fancy cheesecloth like Mr. Josefa, but you know, we're at home. We have strainers and colanders. Oil, any oil will do, vegetable oil, corn oil. Add some oil to the pot, just as we learned in San Antonio, and let that get hot. And then we're gonna strain the masa. Again, this is very reminiscent of making polenta. To, the, to this uh, colado, I'm gonna add some salt, black pepper, season it, and when it's finished, I'm going to add black bean and corn, whole corn and corn. It started with the oil and corn, the water, and now you know when you're getting close because you see it start to pull away from the sides. And I'll tell you, I tasted it and it's delicious. That's good. So I'm going to move it from here. I will now saute some chaya, onions. garlic and here we have chai boy when you talk about San Ignacio, San Delena, Cayo, the Cayo district that's they use a lot of chaya just a chop it up it's like wild spinach almost some people it's like some people compare it to kalaloo so saute the chai black pepper and salt And to steam it up, you could always add a little bit of water. And then we have chaya with tamal. There you have the chaya. Look at that. These are like, we've, why? We spin it, look at the colors, man. Back to polenta. I have it here. And it's doing good. So you have the masa, the corn, 
I'm gonna add some frijol. And this is what we call a one pot meal, man. So, remember we went to Benke and we learned to make maja blanca. And Miss Belita told me, you know what? The step right before you cook the maja blanca is called horchata. So guess what? We're gonna make a panacota from the horchata. Guess what? I have my own meal. Why we gone? We see this thing in a ring truck. We see this meal everywhere. They use it for recado. They use it for corn. They use it for no. We're using it for rice. So I have soaked the rice overnight. And look at that. I have my rice, ground rice here. This time I'm just gonna add some regular cow milk to this one. And from there, so you do your thing, you do your thing, you stir it, strain it. I already had some there, so I'm going to strain this here. And then I will get rid of the shish, like I learned. <laughs> I'm going to take some gelatin, add it to some cool water to dissolve it. You want it, want it to bloom, actually. And mix it well to avoid lumps. And we're going to add this to the horchata. I am going to add some cinnamon and some allspice. You could add allspice. I'm going to separate the horchata at this point into this bowl. Just gonna do a little bit here, half of it. I would also recommend too, because we're making a dessert, it's not traditional, but I would add some heavy cream, media crema. Why? This dessert will be like you're tasting something like a cloud, like, like heavenly. It's gonna be just melt in your mouth. And the horchata, when you close your eye, is still tasting and remembering uh, the finados and the, everything that we use horchata and maja blanca for. But it's just gonna be a little sexier. That's the only thing I could tell you. I will now add gelatin. So you have the horchata, gelatin and we're gonna put it in a flanera and put it in the refrigerator for at least four hours. And later, we're gonna see what will happen to it. It's gonna firm up. Good, that's what I had. We're gonna make a conserva de papaya. What is conserva? It's just like a syrup, a reduction. You could make conserva de pumpkin, hard pumpkin, papaya, any dulce, super, stew super. That are like one conserva or super. I wanted to show you the power of the cal. Remember when we went to San Palmar and then we went to San Antonio, we, had, we learned about cal. Cal is white lime. You have to put it on the corn to take off the, the kernel. No? So we're gonna add some cal to some water. And to that, we will put it in the cal and wash it. But before I get there, I want to brown some sugar and some panela. People in the Cayo district use a lot of panela. It's almost like a, almost like molasses. It's from the byproduct of making sugar, and it's sweet. And you saw you have the brown color. It smells like fogon. It's burnt. It smells like caramel. It's just really natural caramel. Ordinarily, you will start with white sugar, and you have to wait five minutes and get your pan hot and all of that. So we're gonna add panela to a pot. Look at that. It's getting. It's just melting there. Interesting, like I said, green papaya, unripened papaya. We're gonna make it into dices, right? You just simply cut it, dice it, and we get some even beautiful, this is a diced papaya. Magically, what will happen here, I will add the cal to the papaya and you soak it. You soak it, if you wanna soak it overnight, go ahead. This will make the outer cascara, the shell of this little cube, this little dice, it will create a crunch. And when you bite on it, it have a little crunch. I went inside, just, it's just delicious, soft papaya. We want to spice it up. I add nutmeg to my conserva. I will add cinnamon, nutmeg. You have to add clavos. And you, this is our league, cheap. Look at poor man dessert, but it's nice. <laughs> I would advise that you strain off the cal. You don't want to use the cal anymore. And then we're gonna add this, I want some water again. So we're gonna add green papaya, papaya verde. Add some water. Oh no, we had them cracking because hot introduced to coal. 
and it's starting to crack up, but this will melt down. And this I will give another hour. You ever go to this grocery store and find things like powdered whipping topping? It's like making whipped cream or, or you know the whipped cream in the can that you make? We have that in powdered form, you know? So you could get the powder and remember the same horchata that we made earlier? Same thing, I, I divided it in half, I added gelatin to half, we put it in the refrigerator. Now I'm gonna take some powdered mix and I will simply add it to the horchata. I'll make we see what happened now. <laughs> we don't got no electricity, so we have to crank up by hand. Now, like when I crank that ferry back by San Antonio, right? And when I crank, I don't learn for cranking you know, because of the food meal and later I think we had to crank up here. All right, you need cold products. Follow the directions. And I have water here with ice, and I will just mix. If you're at home, you haul out your cake mix, right? The horchata mousse. I whisk them, I whisk them, I give it aeration. I just, you know, it creates air. And now we have, look at this. It's like a meringue of horchata, a cloud of horchata. It's just heavenly horchata. So here we have the conserve. I'm going to put it over here. And just like Miss Belita, I am going to roast some cinnamon, some canela, right in the fire. And also, interesting, I said, let's put some burnt tortillas. It will give that crunch, smokiness, corn. Put it straight on the fire, put it by your comal. Get it burned like this. Some people put it, with, like in San Antonio, they eat it with coconut oil and salt. Delicious. That will roast, sticks ready. I am going to plate the horchata mousse. I put a generous amount, man. And look how it stands firm. <laughs> we could always add some sesame seeds to that. We could add some panela if you like for color. I I touched was it. I was sick. I burned me. But guess what? Speaking about burn, this is a good thing because who knows? Did you know they have a ricardo that's black? And do you know? They intentionally burn the corn. So if we burn the corn, we have a tortilla there. You could add some pepitos, smoke roasted pepitos. You could add the cinnamon sticks to that. And finally, we will add the burnt tortillas, the edges. And that will give smokiness. Some people will say bitter, but you know what? It's not, it's just contrast of colors and flavors. What are you going to do with the PBL? How you look? Well, yeah, man. About time. Make you go. Madre, mamma mia. Why? Let's all plate up this thing, man. Yes, man. About time. I'm going to bring your can to. About time, we'll plate it up. <laughs> and now we finally come to the conclusion of all these dishes that we brought together. They all look like they had a different lot of elements, but they come together and they marry each other so beautifully, just like the cultures of Belize. Check. So, horchata panacota, we put it in ice. We put it in a fridge. A couple hours. It got hard. It got molded. It's like a no-bake cheesecake, like I said. Put them there. Hopefully come out. Oh my goodness. Remember the conserva of papaya? There it is now. Look. I promise you it's gonna get syrupy and it still have that. Okay, if I didn't put the cal, this would become a mushy product. It would just be like baby food and not appealing. You see how it cooked for hours and still has its shape? We're gonna put that there. Oh man, and the syrup and drizzle them. So, so there you have horchata panacota. Polenta! This is colado. We added corn. We added beans. You see now, we got the elements. We still use the leaf. Put the polenta there. So no stress, no wrapping, no steaming, no lot of stress. You could do this at home in seconds. Chaya. Onions, garlic, chaya for a vegetable element. And the beautiful pig. We're just gonna go in there and get a little piece of the pig. And so, remember, we, when we had to make a call, and the call is recado, and you take and you make like a stew. So see, we have the piece of meat there, and I dip it in the call, 
technically that's called right there. And I could put some gravy, puerco pibil, masa, and chaya. Amazing dishes, keeping with the elements, deconstructed, reconstructed again. Elements in there, the flavor, in there, the connotation, they just all think Belize and by my people, they're just beautiful, you know. And look at this beautiful Kaya district. So the friends, our friends at Kaya Lich Menses again, you see when I give them the recipes, I'm gonna do these things, they pair their wines with it. And me personally like red wine. And this is a menage a trois. And, you know, wine can be intimidating, you know. So, you go to the store, you don't know if you want white, red, Zinfandel, Cabernet, you want, you hear all these fancy words. Something like Menage is foolproof because it's a blend of three wines. It's a Zinfandel, Merlot, and Cabernet Sauvignon. Therefore, it pleases all the palates and no stress. I, they say you don't like supposed to drink by yourself, right? So I have people that I want to introduce. These are the people that really help me make food come out. And this young man, Albert Dominguez, especially because he's from San Ignacio and Kenton Castillo from Hopkins. Boy, you hear the Hacksworth Bridge, the kick of dust? Boy, I love it. Boy, you, you got a nice village, you, your tongue nice, eh? You want red or white? Red. So, the San Ignacio Market, one of the top markets in the country. I'm not being biased, I'm trying to promote seriously. I even found a mint tree, you buy the whole matter. And it's coming now a free Clorox bottle. <laughs> There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another edition of Great Belize Cooking. I am humbled, I am happy, I am excited. Cuisine of my life, they are boy, they my sous chefs, and we can do it out them. And I am coming your way with a boat. Watch out for Great Belize Cooking. Thank you. Cheers, brother. Great Belize Cooking was brought to you by the Beverage Division at Carl H. Menzies Company Limited and by Citrus Products of Belize Limited.